Hello and welcome to the Coach on the Couch podcast with your hosts, Martin Fleming and Edward Bates. This fortnightly podcast covers various topics relating to subjects from career and work, health, nutrition and well-being to parenting, relationships, and much more. Each episode will deal with a particular area of these. So if you are interested in learning and hearing, different thoughts, ideas, and even get some tips or helpful suggestions on these areas of life. Or perhaps you are into self-development. Then, we hope you will stay with us and hopefully enjoy a fun, insightful, and what we hope will be an interesting discussion for you. Hello and welcome back to this episode of Coach on the Couch and in this episode I'll be joined by Edward Bates and today we'll be speaking about confidence and we'll see how the conversation goes and what what kind of directions it goes in what we you know um, be interesting to see what we kind of cover and what's brought up with our within our discussion sort of thing so i hope you enjoy this episode and i'll be back again after the main part of the episode so let's go straight into it So welcome back everyone to another episode of Coach on the Couch and today I have Edward Bates with me again on my sunny sofa. Did you almost forget my name there Martin as I placed myself on your sunny couch? Um, no I think I o- o- almost forgot the word sofa actually. <laughs> well I say it's a couch. <laughs> as I was trying to rhyme and, rhyme and make it sound good. Um, it, in exotic East Anglia. Oh, um, How's your summer been? It's yeah, it's been it's been good. Been hot, you know. Yeah. So um, but uh, over here not quite as hot as Greece, but you know. Um, but yeah. So, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling confident about the episode? Oh, oh, you are such a segue, aren't you? You know. Am I feeling? I'm feeling very confident about the uh, the uh, episode. I'm hoping episode. that we'll give all the listeners something to hopefully think about as uh, yeah. they return from what, their... What are we meant to be th- making them think about then? Well, you never guess what. We're, we're going to be talking and thinking about confidence. Oh, that's all right. So you're confident about confidence. Well, I don't know. I have confidence in something. Whether I'm confident in myself <laughs> is another thing. <laughs> Ah, uh, so we're not confident about confidence. Okay. Well, so how confident <laughs> would you say you are in yourself? Are you confident, Martin? What What would you say you are? I'm. I I would say I'm generally a confident person. I mean, there's the, obviously we all have our times where where we're less confident, but as, as naturally, I I I fit, I would say I'm generally, you know, generally and naturally a confident person. Um, would you say you've always how, been how that way? How about yourself? Would you say you've always how... been that way? I th- yeah, I think so. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's that's the most kind of basic answer I can give you. I mean, what about yourself? I would say. See, I've been thinking about this because I knew you were going to ask me this question. I would say that I'm confident on the things I know a lot about, but I do have the habit of overthinking things. So that can then lead to self-doubt. And I question myself a lot. And I I do it not to look for approval from other people. I do Mm -hmm. it to... I think I do it to check myself to make sure that I'm, you know, always alert to things and that I'm ready for... You know, so say if I do like a, a mm-hmm. task which I find every day, you know, that I do every day, mm-hmm. like walking to the shop, for example, right? We all go to the mm-hmm. shops, don't we? Well, I always imagine, you know, what if something goes wrong on the way? 
what if a shop is closed? You know, I can't drive, so I can't just go to the nearest supermarket. Or mm-hmm. what if I struggle to get what I need in the shop? Or what if something embarrassing happens? What if I walk into a load of like shelving and knock off all the... And I'm just kind of giving you... Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of confident about what I should be doing. But the, the thing with me is, is I let myself overthink things, as I've just said. And I think that's where mm-hmm. problems can begin. And I don't really know why I do this. So have you, like you asked me, have you always been like that then? Or, is you know, is that has that always been your natural way or...? When I was really young, I used to be confident about everything. Mm-hmm. And then I think the thing that, that there was a couple of things in my life that made me really question myself. So, for example, when I was younger, really about like the age of 10 or 11, we had like school exams. And I was sure that I'd done well in the school exam. Well, the fact was I'd, been, I'd done dreadfully, terribly. And, and that was a wake up call. You know, because it made me realise that life wasn't easy and life wasn't perfect. Um, and and then um, after that, I became quite the opposite, actually. It meant that I started to work harder, I would say. But it meant that because I'd had that, like, one real bad shock, but, like, it went the other way around, where I wasn't confident about my exams. And then I might have got better results than I'd actually anticipated. Same mm-hmm. too. So with- Go on. So, 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 would you would you say it, it went the other way? Are you like totally the like other extreme now, or is it? Did it just slightly change you? You know, I mean, say for example, like your you you say about the exam thing. Now that that could be kind of a good thing, but there's, if if it's made you doubt your actual abilities and 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 almost like devalue and 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 kind of question your own self-worth if you know what i mean um then that would be kind of a negative kind of uh, effect of of w- what happened so i think it has gone more that way to be honest with you yeah i think i have you know started to question my own my own self and and when i when i talk to people about um, I might say to people, oh, I'm not sure how this is going to go, uh, you know, anything. I'm not looking at it, right, for them to say, oh, you're going to be fine. Because they can't tell me that everything's going to be fine. They don't know how everything's going to go. I'm saying it because I'd rather tell people, I think I'm one of these people now who would rather have, like, if you like, disappointments or surprises, be ready for that. But then if some, if it actually goes, if whatever it is goes better than expected, but I can actually look back and think, wow, I didn't expect that. It's not a healthy way of looking at things, is it, really? So would you be more a pessimist than an optimist? Yes, then? yes. You would. Uh, or maybe a realist. Yeah. <laughs> what All would right, you say okay. you are? What would you say you are? Um... I, I would say I'm more optimistic than pessimistic. I, I mean, but obviously I, I, I'm very aware of the realities of things as well. So I, I, I'm not, I don't delude myself. But, um, but I, 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 and I think as I've got older, um, you know, you say about kind of oh, things going badly or whatever, and if, it get, if it's better, then it's a bonus. But it, it's, for me, that's all. That that's always the case. However, in terms of the bad stuff, it is like if I do what I do. So, so say for example, I go for a, a, a job interview and it doesn't go well. Of course, I'm going to reflect and I'll see. Well, maybe I didn't answer that right, or I know when I walk. You know, as soon as I've walked out, I know if I do a good or mm-hmm. bad interview, and I know it in myself. So, um, there, there's time for reflection. But if I know that I've I did the best I could um, and that's all I could do at the time. And that's even if it wasn't, even if I didn't perform well, maybe I didn't perform well because it was a bad time of day for me or there's other stuff on my mind or whatever, but there's no point in, you know, in my mind, the way I look at it, I don't beat myself up over it. It's like, well, I did what I could do. I can't change it. So just have to wait and see what the result is. Um, And it might, it might still be a, 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 you know, a role or a job I really want to do or whatever. But I, at the end of the day, that that's out of my hands. So mm. I can't control that. And I learned um, because, again, I do a lot of self-development work. Um, I, I, I've also learned, you know, that 
never to have expectations. Mm. Um, it sounds kind of like a negative thing, but if you don't have any expectations, you'll never be disappointed. Yeah, yeah, that makes so, sense. So, um, so then if, if you do do well or if something does happen, then it's, it's even better anyway. But you don't get completely down because if you have no expectations, you don't get completely down if it doesn't go your way. It just is what it is because you didn't expect it to, to go either way. So, um, you know, but if it does, when you do get the result, then, you know, if it's good, then it's good. And if it's not, then it's, you know, it's just, okay, well, I didn't do well. So like, what, what can I take from that? What is my learning from that? And, and that's how I look at it. I know that's not always how other people, and I, I think, you know, if people can learn to, to find a way to do that and develop that, some of that mindset, then, then, you know, that's really worth doing. And I think, um, for me, obviously, the, I, I found the older you get, the easier that becomes mm -hmm. because you, you <laughs> I said this to someone yesterday and it sounds really it, it sounds like a horrible thing, but it's not it's, it's the way you do it. It's not about like just not caring about other people or, or and treating people like rubbish or anything. But it's you start to not worry about what people think um of you or whatever like when you're younger it's all about image and you don't you want to be the same as your friends or you want to be the same as you know you don't want to stand out or you don't want to be and like but as you get older you start to kind of not care like you are who you are and and the people that like you will like you and the people who don't won't and and it's like well then they're not the people for you so it's you know but you're not doing it from from a point of view of oh well i don't care so you just like it or lump it if, if you know from a horrible point of view it's not like what you know just abuse people and, and be you know nasty to people if they don't if they if they if if something happens it's it's more about you not beating yourself up over things and, and worrying about what people think as such yeah you still can make an effort you can still make an effort for things it's still it's not it's not an excuse to get out and making efforts for you know pre pre preparing for interviews or prepping and learning revising for exams or anything like that it's not it's not an excuse to just back off and not do anything and just go oh well that was just me it's not it's not about that it's just all i'm saying it's about just not beating yourself up and and um kind of worrying about and having accept like you said about acceptance i think that's what basically what i'm, I'm on about is like you're not looking for approval and acceptance from other people because you you give that to yourself and you you have that self-worth so you you as you get older you kind of that becomes a lot easier because you just you've lived life you've got or you've got a lot of life experience and you it starts to become that bit easier to kind of go well i know who i am i know what you know whatever so yeah i, I think um, the only time you really need approval well, the only time i would need approval and acceptance for things is if i've done something for the first time right mm -hmm. so, so that's not me saying that i'm not confident to do, do something or that i question myself that might be me not having experience mm -hmm. like like mm -hmm. me talk go to, i told you earlier on today i started a, a new club right mm -hmm. so i i needed them to accept what i was doing but I didn't want them to say, oh, you're wonderful or everything. I mean, it would be very nice if I did say that. But um, I, I needed them to tell me what I was doing wrong and what I was doing right. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I've not done this particular activity before. So, like, although mm. I've actually, like, researched what you do, mm. it was only when I turned up today I and, mean, like, they explained it to me. They, they gave me the things to, to like, feel. But it began to make some sense. Um, so yeah, I need to approve. And, and as like, um, I know obviously the more we do stuff, the more confident we are. But I, I, I wonder if it's confidence or is that just familiarity with the thing and the, the, the increased knowledge base? So it's very easy to gain confidence that way. Yeah. But yeah. I, th and and yes, there is, um, it is very different for people that you know. I mean, like you say kind of generally speaking you're not a confident person or and, and and i said yeah i am so i know things we would look at things and approach things from a different um like angle really um and for me even even if it's like um 
you were saying about kind of um, knowing where other things were if you went down the road to the shop, you know, you know where that shop is or whatever, but it's not easy if that shop was shut. Now, um, obviously, for, for myself, that would be the same. Um, but I, I, if I had to go and find somewhere else, even though, yes, like, um, um, again, we're back to, I know, I know, um, for us, this, this is very prominent because of the, obviously our, our sight impairment, but, um, and it, it, this isn't quite the same for everyone else, but, um, the, 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 the slight difference for me is that, um, yes, I would experience that, that increase in stress if I had to f try and find somewhere that I didn't know, but I, I would probably be more willing to do it than say someone who doesn't have the confidence. I'm not saying they just give up altogether, but they, you know, uh, if, if they're resourceful enough, they might just go, Oh, I'll just get a taxi to there yeah. then or whatever. Yes. Yeah, I'll now agree that, that, that would, that would cross my mind. But then at the same time, if I knew, okay, I know it's only up the, you know, if I get the bus and I know it, I know what, you know, the roughly where to get off or whatever. And I ask a driver then, my my biggest challenge then is just finding it once I get off and it depending on you know if I can find out other ways of doing it or if I can find get you know I mean I when I did um like when when I when I did my my white cane training and all that when I was a lot younger and stuff like that and we had no mobile phones in those days and navigation apps and all that obviously the emphasis emphasis and we were taught you know always get public assistance you know help from from people and stuff like that so so i suppose for me i was brought up you know and raised to you know into into and taught in that way to so um it doesn't bother me approaching people but then see if you're not a very confident person and you're someone who has lesser you know um or or a lack of confidence or you're maybe got a little bit of anxiety or whatever then i know that sort of stuff is a lot harder you know to to um approach people or whatever and then you also these days you've got the risk of like you don't know who you're talking to and mm -hmm. how you know which is a completely different discussion but um mm -hmm. but yeah so so uh, you know but i i think um doing kind of different things so i don't think like say doing something familiar is necessarily making you more confident i think it's it's because it's familiar and you've built up knowledge and and of course it's easy and it's something you get used yeah. to it, it it presents itself a bit like confidence because of course you know what you're doing but um but i think that where confidence really comes in especially with the not knowing is whether people are willing to 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 do it or not do it now i mean obviously outside of the the episode when you're telling me about that you you know um and you were saying about you you know you weren't sure and you know whatever but it so and you then you're telling me now about the the lack of confidence but then i could say well but then you still went ahead with it so you didn't let it hold you back so there must be an element of confident confidence there um you didn't know what you were doing but you you still did it where some people if they didn't have the confidence at all and they were really nervous or anxious over stuff they wouldn't even achieve achieve that so i suppose it's well is there then like is i mean we spoke we we mentioned uh briefly there about the kind of going to the other extreme but so so there's confidence and lack of confidence is there is there somewhere in the middle well, well, I... <laughs> is it is it is it a scale <laughs> I think it is, and I, and I think it is, but I wanted to add another thing to the mix, which is on the same kind of topic, because you've got to be confident to do this as well. And I'm thinking about people in workplaces, because mm -hmm. this, is, this is our target audience. So, Martin, decisions. How are you with making decisions? How confident do you feel in yourself? And, I mean, obviously, I know, but, like, a work decision can have massive ramifications. A personal decision can have also massive consequences, but it can it can also be a really good thing as well if a decision is the right one. But you've got to mm -hmm. have the confidence to do that. How how are you that, with decisions? That so so that's another a really really good 
uh, other question and another kind of good avenue of this because um, I, I think the other, like you've just um, made a distinction of, um, and, and it can come into plenty of other things as well, which is uh, really interesting. Um, and it's another thing that I, I was speaking to someone about the other day. Um, and I think there's, um, it's, it's sometimes it, it's, ver so, and some people can be very different in a work setting than they are outside of a work setting. Yes. It's same as personalities or how how people are. Sometimes they're very different in 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 a work setting than what you'd see them outside of a work setting. Um, and some people don't, you know, they want to keep both very, very separate. Um, and, and that way, then they can be a complete, almost like a completely different person in a work setting than outside. So um, so conf I, I mean, obviously, in a work setting, your your decisions are very different. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I just wonder if, if com that depends on the confidence. Um, well, is is there is is there a, is there a degree of confidence in decision making? That's another interesting thing that I've just it's just come to me from your what your what your question is, um, because for me anyway, I I well, I'm naturally a reflector type, um, but I also have this analytical side of me. Um, and I'm someone that I I won't do something until I know enough about it and that I'm sure of all the all the facts and all the you know things. So I I I won't just jump at something. So I'm not I'm not in, I'm not very impulsive, if you know what I mean. And I'm not you get these people that you'd call doers and all they want to do, they don't like to plan, they don't want to sit there in meetings and whatever. They just like, oh, tell me what to do, I'll get on and do it. And it's like, yeah, but then you could do it but if you if you don't know what you're doing then you know it's going to go completely all over the place so you know they're good for action and they're good for but they they're not good for planning and, and knowing all the stuff to go into it making either you know say for example it's a strategic decision or something like that they 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 don't know all the facts so you know they could come up with these ideas but they might not end up being appropriate so so I'm I'm someone I am a reflector and I, I do spend time at, um, like looking at, you know, if I if I have errors or, you know, trying to look at how can I do something better late next time or and learn and kind of learning opportunities. But I also I don't make kind of um, light decisions. I'll always try and make sure I know enough before making a decision in a work setting. I think for, for someone like myself, I think that can be sometimes very easy because I think you, you, if you're working in a certain role, you, you, you have information at hand, you have, you, you know, if you're working with people or you're managing people, you, you know, what people are like, you know, what their, um, I don't know, like their performance is, or, you know, what their attendance is like, you know, what, you know, um, you know, you know, if they, if there's some, someone that regularly goes off, you know, has sick days or whatever, if they're reliable and all that. So you have, you know, and I mean, even if it's not managing people, you know, but you have, you generally have information at hand or you're doing a task that you know well, or, you know, other people that, you know, do their bit and then you do yours or whatever, you know, the processes and the procedures and all that. So you have lots and lots of info and data at hand that, um, I think making decisions and and or making decisions in uh, in a project or you know being part of a project team and, and and putting your bit to the team i think is a lot easier i think when we when you come to life stuff again you know like many many life things you know it's like becoming a parent they always you know the classic thing is they they always say you know well parenthood doesn't come with with a handbook you know <laughs> it's it's all about life experience and you learn as you go along and, you know, some parent, you know, not one parent parents the same way. You you always find um, lots and lots of differences and some are better than others. And and um, so I think making decisions, though, going back to the main point of that, um, in, in your life stuff, in your personal life can be very different because it's you don't have all the data at hand and you've got and there's a lot of other other factors involved. So, you know, if you're doing something with friends or whatever, you know, it's like, well, do I, you know, I can say what I want, but, you know, is that going to upset this person or, you know, and I know I said about not worrying about what other people think, but, and like I said, it's not about kind of 
deliberately upsetting people or walking over people or whatever and just demanding your own way i'm just saying you know when i as i said like several times already about that it was it's just about not worrying what people think of you from a um you know and, and beating yourself up so it's more about yourself than than the actual kind of just being kind of selfish or whatever but so so making decisions in your personal life if you're you know it's like if you're in a relationship it's um you've got to take your your partner's you know things into consideration yeah. you can't it's not you you know they may not want to do what you do or they you know um they they might think a different way to you and it's like well okay so um which you know this this all then can overlap into how how you deal with relationships and and confrontation or you know differences of opinion but um but yeah i mean you have to take so so your decisions um can be very different so i suppose i think in some ways um maybe confidence would be more prominent in a in a, a, a setting like that than say within work but as i say because you've got more data and more things at hand in a work setting i think you can be someone who's more reserved more um introverted even um as a person but able to make decisions in a work setting but outside of that you could be you could appear to be more of a, a nervous person or an introverted person or whatever because um your work your your personal life and and what you decide there is it, you know if you're not a very confident person then it's gonna it will show more in that side of your life um than than in a work setting so i agree i agree with a lot of that but the only caveat I would throw into it, right, is if you're like, without sounding, I'm not going to use, I'm not going to say the prime minister, but imagine you're a director mm. of a company. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it's a large company or whatever size, you've got to make big, you got to, the decisions are big for the size of that, com that company. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so I, I totally understand what you're saying about maybe in work you can do that. But I think that I wonder maybe 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 we can ask this to people who if we've got anybody in senior leadership positions here, right? Maybe in if you're a senior person, you might be the opposite to what Martin has just said. So you're more sure of yourself out of work because it doesn't matter if a decision is wrong. I mean, obviously, if you're if you're putting yourself or your family at risk, but but certain decisions are smaller than if you're like at the top of a major company or a small company, as I say. And having to make decisions on, say, the day-to-day -day running of a, a certain part of your business, um, then then you've got to have the confidence and the certainty to stand up in front of your your colleagues and your directors and your trustees if you're in that industry and say, look, I chose this decision because, and be able to explain it away then, which means that you are not tripping yourself up, you are clear in what you're saying, and you're able to make a valid point. I think then there's a bit mm. more decision making there, which could be different to what you were saying earlier on. But there's decision making, but I, I, I wonder if you know. Again, it's I get what you mean, and 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 about more confidence in doing that. But um, I think if you're relying on the facts and the figures and the things that you've done um, in relation to making that operational decision within a company, then you know that's what you go by, and that's what the you know. Um, we all we all get it wrong or you can make a good decision but the market can change so if we're, we're talking about business and companies i mean the the economic market can change or and and things like can happen outside of your control so at the time you might have made a good decision but then if some something suddenly happens and and the economy changes then your decision wasn't necessarily wrong I mean, it ended up being wrong because the the environment that's out of your control, you know, then, because so, the whole so, environment. Yeah, but but I think if you make it on the right, you know, uh, your decisions are made on the right basis, um, which really you can only do as much as you can do, like in any big role. I mean, it's like you said about not mentioning prime minister, but I mean that that is where the buck stops with you at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, I just think you're um, too big. So, I started so, that so, conversation. So so you know, even with that. They, that's why you can never you know that the old adage the old phrase of you can never please everyone all of the time because they have to make a decision for the entire country you're never going to please everyone 
and and you, you've got to do the best you can with the data and the, and the situations at hand and some some people is that's not going to you know work out right for and it's not going to go well and whatever they still have to do the same process and that and also to make those decisions in situations like that that's why they have advisors and other people mm. around them because that, and that's what one of the key things with leadership is is that they always say to surround yourself with with what they might call like a, a an expert group or a my, uh, a mastermind group where people have that knowledge to lead lead a company you don't need to have a, a knowledge about absolutely everything um you you're there to to lead the the organization and and bring them forward and have that vision for the the organization it's also why people in say ceo positions and and, and executive positions um why um because they're usually the buck stops with them in the organization um they have no one else to talk to mm-hmm. um it with with their kind of doubts and fears that they might have because they're still human is why um the role like i do is so key that's why coaching and mentoring business coaching and mentoring executive coaching and mentoring is such a key thing because that that gives them someone that they can go to and thrash out their thoughts their fears and their their you know what what should they do what's the, you know and and how how can they move forward with their vision so one of the job roles obviously so yeah so sorry. so I, I i get i get that that you know that you say you need that confidence to stand up and, and say that to other uh, your shareholders your stakeholders or whatever um what i would counter kind of argue that about is that I think standing up to say that to any group of people and doing presentations or, or you know, standing up in a team and, and leading a team um, has the, you need the same level of confidence. It's the same as like you, um, like, like starting, starting a video channel or doing a podcast or whatever. I mean, um, that that takes a level of confidence and we're back to that you know the more you do the more confident you get because you get more familiar with what you're doing you learn different ways to do things and whatever so that that builds your confidence but you you've still got to have that that thing in you to kind of get started really and and that's what stops a lot of us from doing it as well is that getting started thing and i mean that's what stopped me from doing this for a long long time <laughs> yeah i, mean, I guess so, it's the fear of the unknown isn't it as well and like you can't you can't um you can't you can't guarantee that so so one role that i'd like to talk about is um and i, and I wish i was in this role but i do a lot of reading about it is a uh, role of a sports coach mm-hmm. right and I wanted to talk about, in particular, as as you may know, Martin, I, I study and follow a lot about football. i mm-hmm. very interested in, uh, not so interested in stats and numbers, but I'm interested in how a manager trains the, the um, players up and how he or she gets them out onto, a, mm-hmm. onto a, a, a playing field every Saturday afternoon at whatever level, mm-hmm. right? Whether it's like non-league or whether it's right at the top and some of the best leagues mm. in the world, right? Mm-hmm. So that that person has to have a degree of certainty and confidence in what they're doing. And and they, they probably do because they're, they're usually ex-players. So they know what it's like as a player. And then they've gone through, and what we do, Martin, is, is um they get these things called badges. Uh, and it's like you go mm. become like a good manager. So you learn how to like interact with the stakeholders, the club owners and the directors of football now, because it's, it's but the thing mm-hmm. that I'm quite sad about this is is now it's not just down to the um, the manager and the owner of a club, two very different roles. Because without the owner, you wouldn't have the club and the money. But without the manager, you wouldn't have like a well-oiled machine. And um, and and so like what I think is now sad in in, in terms of football is well, I see it two different ways actually. I understand now that, that it's very easy. You put, I know you don't follow football massively, but you hear a lot about managers, good managers who are good players, who are like literally in the job for maybe five, six months, and they have maybe two or three bad results, and they're gone. Now, what you don't hear mm-hmm. about is those people at the top who don't come out and face it. 
So they're all confident, maybe full of bluster, that they've got a club and they've got the money to, to buy a club. But you only hear about it from one side of the fence, if you like. You don't hear mm. the manager, very rarely you hear them, you occasionally do, and the consequences are dire. You, you very rarely, though, hear the, the manager talking about the way the club is run. They can't say that in their press piece. But mm. what I think is, is unfair back is that you might hear, if something goes wrong, only then the owner come out and say stuff about how the manager runs the club. They don't, these owners know very little about football in most cases. Mm. And, okay, sometimes they come out if it's been good. Yes, of course, of mm. course they do. But you only really hear from them if... Yeah, I'm just going to reverse my point slightly. You only hear from the owners if it's good news. You don't hear mm -hmm. from them if it's bad news. But what I think is a shame is the manager, who doesn't actually have control over how that day-to-day -day club is run, has to come out and face the music. And you've got to have a certain amount of confidence and knowledge to do that, but it's not coming from both ways. So my point is mm -hmm. that you can have all the confidence and certainty to, to do something all you like, but if you're not getting mm -hmm. the backing from people at the very top, these people at the very, very, very top of things have to should be able to come out and face it like everybody else in middle management and lower management. Mm. And you can do that. Do you understand what I mean? I I, I do. I think um, I think your your point is valid, but I I, I think you get that in, in absolutely everything. Yeah, I, I just want to use that as an example. And, 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 I, and I and I think that's um, that's just one of these things. Again, that if you're not at the top. Um, and you're in a position, then that's a part of what's not in your control. The, the manager isn't a coach, however. So the, co the coach is what's, what's going to make your team a well-oiled team and, and, and working together, do it, you know, working on skill, working on um, technique and, and all the rest of it, positioning, um, defence, all the rest of it. Um, your manager... Um, so just to, just to slightly um, correct your point, so a manager will, they are, they're, they're the ones who run the business. So they understand the business, they understand the club. An owner, the owner doesn't even need to um, understand the business. They're, they own the club. That's like I can go out, if I had the money, if I had X amount, I could go out and buy a business tomorrow. No, I don't need to know anything about the business if it's already existing and it and it's well and it's being well run and making a profit already. I because there's managers in place for that. All I need to do is have updates. So it's a little bit like having in a charity sector having your CEO and your trustee board. Your trustee board doesn't have a day to day running, and they just yes. need to know that that things are happening and and the strategic way forward. And as long as it's made, you know, um, not in a charity sense, but in terms of a business sense, as long as things are making a profit and things are going well, that's all your owner or your ch shareholders and et cetera want to know. Um, yes, of course, they, they're interested in pro progression or development or, you know, um, in, a, in a sporting world, like maybe buying new p players and, and better players or, you know, whatever. But it's the manager that has the business involvement so as i say, i don't really want to pick points on that but you know because we're not talking about kind of specific roles but i just you know wanted to kind of clarify that point in case it, it was going yeah, to end yeah, up yeah, clouding just, things but, yeah, no, but, I agree with that. but you I agree mentioned with that. about one of the things you really wanted to do um was sports coaching now um what so and we're talking about confidence so a what's holding you back on that and b how do you think you're going to do that um, knowing, well, as we know and, and as probably the rest of the audience know at this stage in terms of the, the, the sight impairment side of things, um, and what do you need to do it? So kind of three little questions in one. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, that's a good question. And thanks for clarifying what I said a minute ago there, by the way. Okay, let's 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 answer the questions as best I can. So your first question was was why have I not chosen to do it? The f yeah, because I'm thinking of the confidence side of things. That's yeah. what that comes from. Yeah, well, the real fact is, is although I say I enjoy watching and reading and listening to to okay, say football for example, right? Mm -hmm. I don't feel I've had enough experience. I, I, when I was younger, I absolutely hated the sport, and therefore I didn't engage mm -hmm. in playing it. 
Um, I only got into playing it when I was about 14 or 15. Mm-hmm. And um, right, the real truth is, Martin, if you want me to, if you want me to say this, it, I mean, the game has now changed quite a lot. But when I was mm-hmm. growing up, I would have been interested in doing that sort of thing. Like the Paralympic football wasn't as big as it was now, I feel. And mm-hmm. and also, like, I kind of have got this sort of thought sometimes, and I know this isn't true, but sometimes I feel like you can be a bit limited if you go into the um into like into like the Paralympics world sometimes. Like to so like blind football, I feel like you're just able to engage with a very small amount of people, because there's obviously not many players from what I know. And mm-hmm. I guess that's what put me off because I would feel like I, I feel like I wouldn't be able to manage in a mainstream environment, and I just feel like I know very little enough, not enough, sorry, about how it works playing blind football. It's not the honest truth. Okay, so 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 that's that. So that's what's stopping you. Um, so what? So um, okay. So let let's take the last. The third question of my question, um, sub sub question, third third bit as a follow on from that. Then, so what what can you do then? Well, okay, yeah, I haven't answered that. So the thing that I thought I would fancy doing is becoming a reporter. Now, I don't mean somebody who goes and commentates on matches, but I'd like to be somebody who either interviews the managers. Or who is like the host, so like you know, a person who introduces the program and welcomes people to listening and, and gives out mm-hmm. the football results. Now I mm-hmm. have done a little bit of that um, before, uh, not not like professionally or anything like that. But um, the problem is, and and even now talking about it now, I know it's sort of wrong what I'm saying because I know that you don't have to. But I was always told, oh, you need a degree to be able to do this. You need to get like your media qualification. You need your degree to do this. I felt like people were like sort of almost fobbing me off a little bit because I didn't have the right qualifications to do that or, or enough experience. And mm. therefore I kind of accepted that rather than like going in and getting some maybe demos of me talking about the game in a hopefully knowledgeable mm. way or as knowledgeable as it can be. Um, mm. And yeah, maybe I should have done that rather than listen to what people said. And, you know, that is down to my lack of, uh, certainty, if you like, in in myself in that respect. Mm-hmm. So so um, and okay. So say say you could you could do stuff. How well? Okay. So the original thing, because you've you've now obviously changed the kind of the role thing. But uh, on the original side of it, how would you have seen yourself able to do um, sports coaching? Um, now I I. So, so my questions, are, I'll tell you for what, where, where the origins of my questions are coming from, apart from the, you know, as I say, the first one was based around your, your, your confidence levels, really, and, and, and kind of why, what's holding you back on it. But the other ones are coming from a point of where I've, um, I didn't complete it, but I, um, I did half the, the course for um, when I was doing um, the, my kind of, professional judo at the time i i did um half the judo coaching course um and that was mainstream coaching course it wasn't like now now you you know when 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 you talk about kind of um like the paralympic games and 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 para sports and stuff um you get what they call the adaptive sports coaches i've got a friend who's got that qualification and stuff um but so the one i did was it was um you know, was was a mainstream kind of judo coaching uh, qualification. I did the first bit of that, and I the, I ended up going back to college, so I couldn't complete it. You see, so that was what what made that happen. But um, so so I'm asking because obviously I have a I know it's a judo setting, but I have an understanding of coaching and what might be required from a point. You know, a certain level of of what might be required in a in in co- you know as i say different different sport but kind of coaching in itself would be kind of similar um but it's like how would you you know um what might be required in that particular sport like the football or whatever might is going to be how how you would how do you see yourself doing that adapting that or or doing well um 
So if if you're if you're talking about obviously um, uh, like blind football and and those kind of things, then obviously it's not going to need that mu- the, the 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 kind of the methods and practice are, are probably going to already be there. Um, so you're not going to have to work that out. But it, you know, if you were talking about kind of even like low level mainstream uh, sport it's you know that might be very different so i you know so that that's just like my my thought process well that's a good that, point that i mean question. i mean if i was going to imagine if i okay imagine i was going to manage a team right and and it was well you're are you managing or are you going to go are you going to be coaching them sorry coaching coaching the team okay right, right but the first thing that, that would be my biggest concern well the first well so what i would do is is i would uh I've read a lot of books from coaches in football about how they mm. de- how they develop um, really good sessions, successful Place. sessions. Mm-hmm. So, so first of all, I'd be thinking about the nutrition, and, uh-huh. and then that kind of thing, and ways to prevent people from becoming injured, and and, mm-hmm. to, be, and to keep their fitness up first before we even started kicking a ball around. So, like maybe in the gym, they'd be running around, maybe doing stuff to build their own bodies up, so that they would feel mm. confident when facing an opponent in a football match. I would like to think that I give them the tools to do all that. Then we'd obviously mm. move on to the ball technique and, and team play and working together. Mm. And so, so very kind of, you know, I'm just briefly summarising my point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the, the thing I think that would stop me from doing it, though, is people could first, you know, people could say to me, well, you haven't played the game, so how do you know all this? And maybe, mm-hmm. like, wouldn't they? Because I've not played properly. So, like, what? My, my my points would not be valid. Mm. I don't think they would be valid because I've not experienced it. I've not experienced so, it. So what? So you're you're kind of um, a bit like another. It's funny how I, like I've had conversations in the last little while, and I keep coming up with these phrases for this this episode. Um, so it's a bit like um, w- works on the drawing board, but not necessarily in practice. Well, I think that. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we don't know. I'm oh, very good, by the way. Very strategic language there. Um, I, I feel that's what could happen. I feel I feel that I could come unstuck quite quickly. And what about the sight side of that, though? Well, that's a. I mean, I, I mean, like if you can't see what they're doing with the ball, how do you know? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a good. Well, I hadn't working. Even thought about the sight loss side of things, to be honest with you, just at this moment. But yeah, you're right to mention it. I mean, yeah, how would I be? Yeah, I mean, that's another thing. How would I be taken seriously? Like if I said to them, right, you know, do a five a side you know, or uh, do a do a, a 5k run then, for example, how will I know who's done what, you know, or, or how will I know, like, who's walked it and who's run it? I mean, you know... And, so and you... how do you know the techniques, right? You know, I mean... Yeah, kick, yeah. Kicking a ball that, you know, if you don't kick it right, it's not going to go to the right place or whatever, so... Um... I, mean, I, can't, I can't echolocate that, Martin, can I? <laughs> so... So that you know that that's some of again why I asked the question, but I didn't want to get into too much detail because we're talking about confidence today. But but it's just I I just wanted to bring that up in terms of but and obviously if you were doing para sport though, as I said, like there is adaptive coaching uh, qualifications and 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 obviously you can you can coach with adaptive sport because it's already that's that's already there. It's in place. Um, the way to deal with things or would have already been in place. So, so if you go down that road, it's it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean you know. In one way, you could say, "Oh yeah, but that's the easy way out." But at least you're able to do something if you wanted to do that. It, it, that's the, the 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 kind of the, that avenue to do it. Um, I, I think you you know. I I come I suppose I come from a a, a personal kind of side of for, for me you know i would agree with you in terms of the, the not doing something and and how can you coach on it side of things if you've not done something or haven't got the experience that's just me i i think there are there are times when you can argue the case that if you don't if, you know that you can do something if, if you've got all the knowledge and and um understanding of something you can still do something without having experience but i think when you're looking at sports coaching um, or coaching that in, in that uh, kind of dimension or realm or whatever you want to call it, kind of a coaching in a, in, a, in a practical sense, I think it is always useful to have that, um, 
that experience, that personal experience. You know, again, that that's my feeling, which is similar to yours. I think you know, but then the only way to change that is to actually then do it, isn't it? And then then and then even if you only did it for a month or two months or whatever, if you if you played in a few. Uh, matches and and one thing got and, and as long as you got some experience that you have you feel a, a in yourself more confident and a, and and feel more v- valid you know valid in your decision making or your coat you know that you can say to people i'll oh, do this or that or whatever um that that's what matters it doesn't necessarily mean you've got to go into it and then play it for the rest of you know rest of your life first or however many years or whatever but you know, give it enough time that you you feel that you've got now enough experience to then move on. And, you know. and that's really what comes back to the whole start of it. The whole sport, sporting discussion. I didn't actually mm. need to go into that as much as I did, but it was just an example there. And yeah, thank you for pulling me up on, on the accidental misuse of the uh, different roles there. But yeah, it's quite an interesting discussion. But I think really that brings us back to anything, really, what you've just said there. You could take that into any kind of work situation, running a company, running a team, anything mm-hmm. really, and, and having the confidence to do that and to reflect on things. Still doesn't mean you get mm-hmm. always right, does it? But yeah, it's a, it's a strange one. It's a big one. And I think it's one that... Uh, so, so do you think confidence can, you know, I mean, we spoke about the more you do something familiar... Um, the more confident you kind of get but is it as a, as we kind of uh, and as, a, as as my point was is that is that really confidence or just you know because you know what you're doing now but and it can present like confidence but do you think confidence can be learned i mean because you said you were when you were younger and then obviously something happened that made you less confident but so do you think it's possible to then relearn to be confident yes i think it is possible to relearn it but then uh-huh. again, I think it's how, and everybody changes as they grow older. I, th- I think it is possible to learn it. But then... How, how so? I know the answer to this because I'm a coach. But <laughs> okay, so, okay. So this is a coaching session for me now, is it? I would say, I, well, I would say that like, I mean, I'm going to be careful how I answer this one. But <laughs> if you want to talk about confidence, is I, I would think it might be who you surround yourself with. And what you surround yourself with doing. So making sure you're confident in the things that you know that you do a lot of. But I still think e- equally you can learn confidence. But I think also you can still have knockbacks. And it's how you manage uh-huh. those as well. Because like, I could become really confident like I was sitting when mm. I was like that 10 year old again. Yeah, I did really well in that exam. Mm. And I could have, have that with another thing in life where I start off really confident. Mm. And then I have a shock. So I could be back there again. Mm. So I could easily, I wouldn't say I've unlearned it, but I would say that, it's, I, go on, answer the question. I, I, so so, so I, 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 I think, I mean, you've got, you've got valid points. Um, my, my feeling though on the knockback thing is something that, um, I mean, you, you get a lot of that in direct selling and stuff like that. Um, and it's, it's, it's back to the, a, a shift in mindset with that that that's so that i mean it, it's obviously like you say there, there's confidence involved but and that can knock your confidence but um it's it's kind of coming back to that whole shift of mindset where if you get knockbacks it's trying to use that as a learning experience rather than a a negative oh i'm no good at this then um, that's not healthy to be like you now know, that's not healthy, now, is it so as a coach and in in everything i know um and how i deal with people with regards to confidence now i don't i don't i'm not what you know in terms of when when people specify specialize in in particular areas of coaching i don't particularly um count myself or, or or um promote myself as a confidence coach or whatever because you can get those but obviously dealing with people with that with particular issues whether career or business or whatever you you're always going to deal with people with regards to other other things and and confidence building or that you know and all those kind of things so um and in my approach to confidence and 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 um i also kind of use it 
slightly with with working with anxiety and that's all about breaking things down and and having lots and lots of small successes um so if you if you break things down enough um and you give people tiny more smaller goals to achieve and every success makes them more confident because if you have doubt, doubts about yourself and you you try tackling one big problem or you look at it as a one big thing then you're already almost setting yourself up and your mindset for failure anyway and if you're not confident already you're already going to be close to giving up so if you if you take something and go right okay so i mean for example if you've got someone with with anxiety where they can't even go outside the door then then how can you how can you build them up to try and um they'll they the thing with anxiety, and as I said, I'm, uh, and I want people to know, you know, um, when I'm talking about this, is I'm not lessening the, the 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 condition, and I'm not lessening what they're going through, um, and I'm fully aware that if you've got severe anxiety, you you may never ever totally get over it, but what you can do is you there's you can build stuff up enough that you you then know how to manage it better, and you can actually have a fuller life. I, I know it won't ever, you know, you may not get rid of it, but you can, you can learn to manage it. And by, by building up these successes, so if you can't go outside the door, similar to my friend who was like that at one time, um, I, I built it up. I said, okay, you know, just go to your front door. Even, have in mind that you want to go shopping and get everything, get everything ready, you know, get your coat on, whatever. If all but if you can make it to the front door and you can't go any further then okay but don't be, beat yourself up about it you've got that far as long as you've got a backup plan like she might say well i you know um i say well if you can't do it but you need this stuff what can you do and she'll well well i can get my son to get it on the way home from school so right okay so if you if we don't get any further then at least you know you can get your stuff so so it's it's breaking things down my point is you break things down and are, if if they can then do that and then they can open the door and then that you can spend time like that and you go right that's that's you've achieved that that's great let's t let's take a step outside and you know and things like that and, and like i said to someone the other day anxiety isn't something you can you can you can uh get through and you can you can learn to manage and you can kind of get over you know as i say you won't totally get over it but get over it in a point of getting your life back you 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 won't do that overnight um it's a long process but if you break it down enough and get the successes you you want then you can you can you know do that and that's similar to confidence that's how i work i would work with confidence and and it, you you build up these little successes and the more successes you have the more you f you feel better within yourself and the more confident you'll get because you'll be willing to try things yeah, so, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, I don't want to sit here and speak about anxiety and experience of it because I, I don't, I've never talked, I've, I know people have got anxiety, but I don't know about, you know, talking to people about, about that issue and it would mm -hmm. probably to, to spout off things. But what mm -hmm. I wanted to say was, I do want to agree with you because I think, I feel that's an area that does link with, with confidence to some degree, not, not fully, but I think there's some links to it there. Mm. Um, and I think I feel like we should have mentioned that earlier on because, yeah, it's like the very when I say the very bottom of confidence, I don't mean that in an offensive way. Mm. But like if you've had something that's made you anxious or you're just you're an anxious person and you can't overcome that, you're right. You do have to start building that up. And I feel that we haven't really talked a lot about that today. That's why I kind of wanted to finish on mm. kind of note because I really I, I want to leave the listeners with with maybe some pointers and and some hope that you know if you do if you are lacking in confidence that there is a way to build it up and and same with if if there's anyone who suffers from whatever level of anxiety as well that there is is a way and a hope out there that you can do it because a lot of people with anxiety or or and and even just general self uh, lack of self confidence as i said like even earlier in the episode um we'll just kind of almost give up to begin with and and um 
and not seek it because they they think well I can't do it I can't do it so I I just wanted to kind of definitely you know bring that in there and and you know I'm aware kind of really um of of kind of wrapping the 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 episode up to be honest yes. because we yeah. could talk about this forever um yeah I feel like maybe so, so many different it. aspects of of confidence and and why what you know i mean we haven't even touched on why why is it you know we we started off with you you not being and me being a confident person what and what is it that makes people like that why what is it that makes people different or, or or is it like in your you know your case are we all maybe we're all born confident and and then people have knockbacks like yourself and then go less confident i don't but but or is it or is it that you know um some people are born one way or another or, or does it have um a, does it relate and have an association with what another episode we did before oh, oh no we haven't done it have we um i think we we talked about doing it i think um with, re- with to do with resilience is is it um is has it has it got something related to that um you know if you have knockbacks if you're a more resilient person and what um you know that may not knock you out, you know, knock that confidence off you. So it's so, so easy. We've um, done it before, but not, not, we, we, we sort of only, again, I feel like these are, these are topics that could be and, revisited. In and, and, and then, you know, we, with the resilience thing, then you can go into realms of like, well, well then what makes someone resilient more than others? <laughs> wow. But, but anyway, so, so, you know, but I, I want, you know, I, I did want to kind of, you know, you so, so, I mean, I know we, I could have mentioned it earlier in the, in the episode as well, but um, definitely I wanted to kind of essentially end up with, with, with giving something back to the, the, the listeners to either try and help with, even if they could do it themselves in terms of breaking stuff down and, and looking at trying to do things that they know that you know you're almost guaranteed to achieve you know you can do it. You, you're mm. going to be able to do it and once you do that you know yeah it might be so basic that you go oh it's not worth saying it's a success so, you know anyone can do that but in the situation where that involves people with very very low uh, confidence even self-esteem or or severe a- anxiety you've got you've got to look at look at it as a win and a success because you wouldn't have done it otherwise. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I, I, you know, that that was why there. And maybe um, this is something we could come so back yeah, to so in a well, few episodes' time. Maybe once we have time to. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I think it is important what Martin said, and that I just wanted to again clarify what I said earlier on getting the distinctions wrong with those particular coaching roles. So I do apologise for that. I was getting into my point there. So for anybody who does come on and, and moan at me there for getting the job roles wrong yeah i'll take that one now <laughs> you're confident to defend yourself <laughs> well, i was just i just I, I, i'm confident enough to say that um i got into my point there i wanted to bring up a sports coach just as an example not intending to have the big discussion mm. on it but we did and got so into it but i lost track of where i was so there you go <laughs> hopefully a public apology oh, made yeah. <laughs> so um that's it for this time i think ed Definitely. you know yeah. um and uh thanks for spending time today with us and um i'll you know be back with everyone in another couple of weeks um with uh hopefully steve on the next occasion we haven't heard from him for a good while so yeah it'll be good to have um, him back won't it It'll be good to hear from him so yeah so uh and you have so a good week, week time, everybody, then. and keep up the good work. My end as well. Keep keep busy and keep on going. Take care, everyone, and uh, I'll look forward to being back in a few weeks. So, right until then, bye for now, Ed, and thanks very much. Thanks, bye, bye everyone. Bye for now. Hello and welcome back. I hope you found that episode interesting and enjoyable. Obviously, we covered um, a lot about confidence 
and um, various aspects of dealing with confidence and asking those kind of interesting questions around you know when when are we more confident than others and and um and about you know whether you're a confident person or not and i um obviously touched on things like um the whole lack of confidence dealing with lack of confidence and um and kind of a strategy for dealing with that and um obviously that also um included me talking about anxiety now there's lots a lot to do with anxiety and i, I as a you know i'm i just was mentioning that aspect of things f um from the similarities in approach to to dealing with things but i know um there's different levels of anxiety and some can be a lot more severe um and uh, that's the strategy can still work and it's still um valid obviously it's not something that can be kind of sorted overnight and so i don't want anyone to think i was um you know making light or lessening the the experience because it can be uh quite a restricting um thing to have anxiety and um what i would say is if you know if there's anyone that has anxiety wants to deal with that then there is plenty of supports out there and um try and look for supports and help and um either counseling or support groups or you know there's lot lots of different ang angles and aspects or um if you want to speak to or, or kind of contact me um, privately than you can do um, like usual anyone can contact us on coach on the couch 22 at gmail.com and uh, you know I can see how how I might be able to help or um, maybe help to find supports and that kind of thing so so um i just wanted to kind of just clarify all of that from from the episode and um don't forget to like subscribe and uh, leave comments and suggestions and feedback um obviously the like and subscribe is it for anyone um listening to this on on youtube and our youtube channel so um but yeah feel free to give us feedback suggestions and comments and leave them here and um or otherwise as i say send them to us on on email at coach on the couch 22 at gmail.com and i look forward to being with you again in another few weeks so until then bye for now Thank you for listening to the fortnightly Coach on the Couch podcast with your hosts, Martin Fleming and Edward Bates. You can find this podcast on all the major platforms, including our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash at Coach on the Couch too. You can leave comments and feedback on either the Anchor platform or our YouTube channel. You can contact us by emailing coachonthecouch22 at gmail.com. Thank you again for joining us and we look forward to being with you soon.